Hello everybody. Welcome back. We're finally to the stage to where we can start talking about the front panel switches and the lights. I could have made this example of amplifier just simple, straightforward, but I thought, well, there are some tricks that you can play with switches and diodes and the relays that you can make a system a little more automatic and work a little bit beyond what just a normal amp would what you would have um, and like I was mentioned before this amp since this is just part of a tube tester only a little bit exaggerated uh, you're gonna want a method <clears throat> to burn in tubes that's uh, light the filament um, and run them with a fan on them for probably up to 24 hours, maybe a little more, depending on how old the tube is. And the tube tester that I built originally, I never considered that a problem. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> no explanation. I just never, never thought about it. Uh, I'd go to the ham swap meet, and I'd buy as many tubes as I can for five and ten bucks, and two for five, two for two, whatever they had. And no matter how ugly, if they were really ugly, I'd try to jew them down to a buck a piece or something. Especially if they looked like they'd been dropped and had dents on the uh, anode cooler. And I'd take them home, and sometime later I'd bring out the tube tester and plug them in and just fire them up and see what happened. Uh, see if I had good tubes, and if I had one that put out power, I'd... Uh, take a sharpie and put a label on it and I'd put it in a separate little box by itself and that was my collection of good working tubes but uh, nowadays it's the tubes are so expensive even used it's probably a good idea to err on the side of caution and uh, run the tube a little bit with just filament and no high voltage on the anode and no other voltages except bias. Bias is okay, it doesn't bother the tube. The tube don't even know it's there. But screen voltage should not be applied uh, whenever high voltage isn't applied. And the way I've got the switches set up is the high voltage transformer can be left off. And its indicator light is doing double duty. I have I'm using uh, bicolor LEDs. They're uh, green and or red. And so red is, in this case, going to show fault. There's a problem. Green is going to be shown as ready. Um, and that same light is also tied into the screen protection relay. So as long as there's no high voltage, the circuit that detects the high voltage is going to uh, let that relay stay unkeyed. So, in essence, the fault light or the red light would be on. So, we'll start from the very from the power on switch and we'll work our way through. The very first switch, we've got a one amp fuse going to it. This little switch is a um, little sub-miniature type toggle bat handle. On this one I'm using a double pole, double throw. No center off. It's just on or off but it's a double pole. I may have a use for these other two contacts, three contacts in the future so I'm gonna leave myself something to add on. Um, like if I wanted to say add a uh, timer that would hold the fan running after the filaments turned off, I would use this switch to activate that circuit. So, I have the wires already on it. One side is going to go to the transformers for the bias and the keying supply. I've already showed you those, the two little transformers, the 18 volt and the 600 volt. Uh, the 600 volt also is carrying the 6.3 volt uh, filament, so that would be turned on. One amp fuse protects that, and this goes to your mains. This would, I'm going to call them line one. And off of line one, I'm also showing 
you want to tie in your high voltage uh, fuse, which is a 15 amp in this case, and it goes to the, uh, I haven't shown it yet because we haven't wired it up, it goes to what I'm calling a power on, a high voltage power on relay. It's just a single throw, normally open, 24 volt relay, and the high voltage switch uh, turns it on. So that's the next thing. When the power comes on, this green light for this switch is only a green LED in this case, and it's just simply tied to the 24 volt key in supply. So it's always in the circuit, always on, or always ready to be activated as soon as the power for supply for it comes on. So that's that switch. Next, <clears throat> this is the high voltage power on switch. If it's left off, the screen protect relay does not activate. Therefore, the light that's going to be above this is going to be red. And all this, all these wires are going to do, one's going to go to the 24 volt supply. The other line is going to connect to the relay. That's actually this switch right here that you're looking at. And if I forgot to mention it, we're working with schematic 24. This is the uh, schematic that you should already have. This is the last one I sent. Uh, schematic number 24. Okay, so that's the high voltage switch. Just a simple on and off. All we're doing is turn the relay on. The relay is going to apply power to the high voltage transformer. Okay, the next, I've kind of pre-wired them, so this may look a little confusing, but I've tried to wrap the leads up. So we're just going to go through these and I can point out what I've done. So on here, the next light in line is a the transmit receive light. So receive is going to show green, transmit red and it's tied to the antenna relay, the center uh, pair of contacts on the antenna relay. So it's in the re when it's in the unkeyed position, the relay will be close to the contact that goes up to the green light, and when you key up, that movable contact is going to go to the line that goes to the red. Now, also on that is tied here, uh, I forgot to mention that if the screen protect relay is in the relaxed or off position, it doesn't apply 24 volts for the uh, key in circuit to operate. So it'll stay in the red. You can try to key up even though the operate switch is in the operate position. Everything stays off until you get high voltage. And that's this wire right here. So when this comes down, this will apply 24 volts. That'll light the green light on the receive. And you'll be uh, ready to light any of the other lights on there. Now, this is the one contact. There's two. This is a double pole, double throw. One side here, just simply so we can put it in standby, it turns out the green light. So you can put it in standby, the green light will be out. When you put it in operate, it'll turn the green light on. And then when you key up, the red light will come on. So you have uh, the two, con two outside contacts are just simply going to go to ground. The center contact goes to the uh, resistor on your LED. And so I've tried to make these in pictures so you can kind of get a better idea what your wiring should look like if you're going to use these uh, two color LEDs. Okay, the second part of that switch, here's where a nice little trick comes in. Center off, of course, is standby. Now, if we want just to operate without receive boost, this switch comes to here. The 24 volts will go out to the master relay and it'll be ready to activate whenever it detects carrier. The diode blocks any voltage from going out to the receive boost circuit. So now we can have operate without receive boost. We flip the switch the other way. Now the 24 volts is going to go through the diode 
to the master relay and it'll also go to the receive amp and relay. So now you have or operate with receive boost. So if the switch is in one position you have operate only without receive boost. Flip it the other way and you have receive boost and operate all on one switch. What that is is there's a diode probably can't see it. The band end is going to point towards the master relay. The opposite end of that is going to go to the receive boost. Just a, it's another 1000, a 1N 1004 is what this diode I'm using. I've just simply tied it across the two outside contacts of the switch. Okay, moving on. The next switch is the sideband AM switch. Ah, <clears throat> one side just runs the light so in AM you got a green light and in sideband you get a red light. This is an example of the key and circuit that's all it's in here for. That's why I put the arrow here. These other two contacts where my blue and orange wire are this goes back to the 330 ohm resistor. In this example, the schematic, here's the switch. With it open, we're in sideband. When we close the switch, that ties the 330 ohm across the resistor that's already there, and thus it speeds up the unkey for AM. So with it closed, your key in circuit will be in AM. With it open, it'll be in sideband. So this switch will be red. It'll make your light red for sideband and green for AM. Okay, um, the next uh, thing I'm going to do, I'll uh, wire the chassis up. And uh, I don't know if that'll help you see anything, but uh, <laughs> we'll hook everything up and be ready when we come back. This should uh, this should be enough now so you know kind of where your switches go. Like I say, this is a schematic you already have. Schematic number 24. And uh, we'll, we'll get on with the process here. Um, so I think... Yeah, we'll just go ahead and do that and uh, let you look there. Well, it was probably pretty hard to see what's there, but um, the lights, if you wire them up the way I've got them laid out here, you don't have to do it this way. You can pick your own system to go. And uh, if you have any questions, you can always uh, shoot me an email and um, kind of tell me what you want to do, and I can draw up a schematic and send it to you uh, for your particular uh, situation. And, uh, yeah, it's probably the best way to do it because everybody's not going to want to put theirs together this way. I, I know that. It's probably too complicated for some people. They would, but if you want a rig that's totally dressed up with lots of lights, and I know people like lights, and uh, especially if they're active and they actually tell you something, um, that's when a light is worth something if it actually tells you that something's happening. Okay. Uh, my battery indicators on so shoot me an email if you have questions radiomedic111 yahoo.com and if you feel this is uh, some worthwhile information that I'm giving out and you'd like to help out I'm not asking for donations but if you feel you want to help it, PayPal address is Honda-CB350 at live.com. Anything would be appreciated. And please help me out, guys. At least hit the like button there and to get this out to as many extra viewers. Uh, the algorithm doesn't do much with comments, but it kind of looks at how many people like the video and uh, then it'll, it'll suggest it to more people. So thank you. And uh, our next we'll work on is the box, the air box. We get, uh, I'll wire the tube socket up and I have I got to make a kind of a schematic for that. You already have it, but just in case you don't, 
Uh, we got to hook up a Pi input circuit for it, and I'll show you how to tune it and wire up the tube socket. So thank you for now, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.